Morning folks, I had a, a good night's sleep, um, nice and warm, nice and comfortable. Uh, we were obviously up early this morning, we had to be, to, to get off Dana Island before the, before the tide dropped too much so that we couldn't get off. It's all, it's all mud banks and trying to wade through that is, well, it's dangerous. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we packed away pretty quickly, had, had time for a, a cup of coffee this morning, that's about it. Um, but you know, we did make our breakfast last night, so uh, we can stop wherever we want really and have that. It's just a cold breakfast, so that's fine. Um, to get off the island, because the tide was already going out, we had to find a, um, a place where it was kind of rocky enough underfoot. And the only place we could find was between these old sunken barges, which are up on the, on the beach there at Darnet. Um, and uh, yeah, there was a kind of like a, almost like a canyon <laughs> between two of them. Um, and we were able to launch there, which was fine. It is absolutely gorgeous out here this morning. The, the river is like a mill pond. We've got the, the uh, outgoing tide to help us along. And uh, we're off to find some submarines. Just on the left here and right across the river from Darnet is the King's North Power Station and Jetty. Annoyingly, I broke my sunglasses yesterday. They were in my pocket while I was carrying my, my barrel up to the fort and the barrel bounced against my leg and, and snapped them right on the bridge just here. So there's nothing I can do about it, nothing I can do to fix them. So uh, I'm gonna spend the day squinting because of all the glare off the water, but at least my hat should give me, you know, a bit of protection from the sun, keep the sun out of my eyes but it's just the glare that comes off the water that's the issue. But never mind, I'm not complaining it's sunny, that's for sure. As is the old bees nest jetty. Um, obviously no longer in use. <laughs> There's great sections of it missing and uh, the rest of it is just rusting away and slowly returning to nature. But just before we get to that jetty there's a channel on the left hand side called bees nest creek. So we're gonna try our luck up there see if we can get close enough to these subs to be able to see them. The wind has picked up considerably since we left Darnet Fort and uh, it's creating these wind waves out on the water. They're not big waves or anything but they, um, you know, they're very close together wind waves so they just kind of constantly slap against the hull of the boat. Well, we've just paddled up Beaness Creek um, to a bit of the old jetty that sticks out into the creek here, thinking we might be able to, to get out. This is just by a kind of raised 
bit of land um, above the high high water mark and the the subs are actually or one of the subs the better of the three the, the more well preserved is behind this island so I think our only option here is to have a little look and see if we can get out there's a great big concrete block just behind me whether you can see that uh, over there somewhere and attached to it is this stonking great big chain which we've just paddled along and um, we might be able to use that to help us get up the beach there and onto that high ground I'm gonna I'm gonna have a little go and um, see whether it's possible <laughs> uh, I suspect that you know it's just thick mud where we're at where we actually are there's, there's sort of like a few stones and bits in it but it's not like where we launched this morning is it no it looks like mud <laughs> yeah it looks like mud to me too They don't make chains like this anymore. That is a serious bit of ironwork right there. We've only got to walk a short way on the chain and then the mud is kind of firm enough to walk on, you don't sink too much into it. Well, over there in the distance, you might just be able to make out some rusting bits of metal. That is actually one of the U-boats. I'm going to see if I can pick a way across to get a bit closer to that sub and get some footage. I don't like my chances because this is just a maze of muddy, you know, little channels and stuff and some of the mud is really deep. But I'm going to have a go and uh, see what I can see. Well, there it is, lying over there just behind that bit of raised land there. Um, but between me and that is this load of mud here and I'm not gonna try and walk through that. So there were three of these. Uh, this one is UB22 and then UB76 and UB93 lie over there by that jetty that we can't get to. Um, they were captured after the First World War and had their engines stripped out and they were being sold for scrap. And as they were being towed off, the tether snapped and they uh, drifted up onto, the, up onto the mud here and they've been here ever since. This one is really well preserved. Um, there's quite a lot of it left because it's sort of high enough out of the mud. The other two are, are not in such good condition. But um, yeah, it's a real shame that that tide is out. I would have really liked to have gone over and had a good look. As we've got some time to kill before the tide comes back in and we can get off this bit of land, we're gonna have <laughs> some more to eat. <laughs> I know we've only just had <laughs> brunch. <laughs> um, yeah, I've got uh, vegetarian pasta with beans and tomato sauce. And I've got beans and sausages. <laughs>
that was a real slog across there. Um, and I'm a bit concerned because um, I left Andy behind and he's a long way, he's a long way back out there. He's still got a long way to go. He's just a dot. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna give it, um, I'm gonna give it five minutes, see if he gets notice, noticeably any closer. And if not, I'm gonna paddle back out there and, and paddle with him back in. But that was hard work, paddling against the tide. How you doing, buddy? Slowly. Hard work, isn't it? I only realised how slow I was going as I was going past that boy. <laughs> yeah, I was the same when I went not past moving. It. <laughs> oh, well done, mate. There's a little beach over there. Can you see it? Is that what you're on? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I lost you for a while, then I saw you on the beach. Well, we're both safely across and we're actually on the westernmost tip of Burntwick Island where we're going to be staying tonight but um, we're not going to be able to get onto the island not without clambering up mud so we're just going to wait for a little while yeah wait for, the, for a minute and then have a paddle round have a paddle round once the tide comes up a bit sounds a plan take take a moment for a little break <laughs> <laughs> I've landed here at the spot where we're going to be spending the night here on Burtwick Island um, where we stopped on that little beach earlier on that was right at the other end of the island and we had to paddle down around south around a big sort of headland and then back up fighting against the wind so it did take us quite a bit of time to get here um, you can probably just see Andy out there making his way in um, this little rocky shoreline that I've uh, pulled up on is absolutely strewn with old rubbish it must have been used as a tip at one point I think but old bottles bits of broken crockery cups and plates and, and bits and bobs strewn everywhere yeah and the hulk of an old boat or ship sat here on the uh, on the rocky shore rotting away and the remnants of the old jetty
I've got my shelter set up for tonight. I'm using my canoe as a windbreak and I've just put a tarp up the back of the canoe just to extend that windbreak over the top a bit. Um, we're not forecast for any rain, so it's not for rain. It's literally just to, just to keep the wind off, give us somewhere where we can tuck out of the wind because that wind is cold. Although it's sunny and the sun has some warmth to it, the wind is just cutting right through it. And um, you know, when I stopped paddling, I had to put my warm, my warm coat and my woolly hat on because I was cold. So uh, that's my setup. Um, I've got the bivy bag and everything else just as last night. And that should be just the job. We can sit there with the wind off us tonight. Maybe have a fire in this area down in front. Andy has got his one tigress tent that he used in the fort last night. But um, he's actually been able to peg it out today because <laughs> there's something to peg it to rather than just being concrete. So uh, that should be just the job. I actually think that will hold up pretty well to the wind when it being a dome shape. And then we've just put the other canoe between Andy's tent and the and the tarp shelter just to cut the wind off from that area there. So that should do the job nicely. Thought I'd fill you in on a bit of the history of Burntwick Island, just based on what I've managed to find out myself. Um, this place, this island, has been used for centuries. Um, it's thought that it was used by smugglers hundreds of years ago, and you can kind of see why, really. It's, a, it's an isolated spot out in the river. Um, you know, nowadays there's all this industry going on. There's container, container ships and ports and, um, you know, power stations and all the rest of it. Of course, none of that was here. Um, hundreds of years ago so uh, it would have been an ideal place to hide yourself away that's for sure. Um, there was a garrison built here uh, just before the turn of the 20th century 1899 I think 1898 I can't remember um, and uh, basically um, it was to operate a boom which went across the river Medway which could be used in times of war to, to protect uh, the naval dockyards at Chatham. And during the Second World War the Barretts came into use again as they operated a submarine net which ran across the river and it could be retracted. It was a massive winch and uh, a similar facility on the other bank and they could bring the net across or stretch it out across the river to stop enemy submarines from getting up to the to the dockyard. There are nesting birds out here on this island, just as there were on Darnet. Um, we've been really careful to keep well away from them and not disturb them. Um, but if you're planning on coming out here uh, to camp, um, I'd well recommend coming later in the year. July or August is, is a safer bet um, where you won't be disturbing those those birds sitting on eggs. Jove, I think we've got it. Yeah. Jenga time. Yeah. Last night. Much less, much less smoky than, smoky than last night.
already looks good. I've got some Copernicus sausage. Oh, I've got two Copernicus sausages. <laughs> I'm just going to put them in in chunks. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, break them off. Just need the whole sausage in. <laughs> oh, a bit of cheese. A bit more cheese. A bit of fromage. Lovely, thank you. Look at that. Mm. So smoky with that sausage. That's lovely. <laughs> That's gorgeous. Before we lose the light, I just thought I'd show you on the map where we've been, really. Um, we started off at Queensborough, which is kind of down this way off the map. Um, you can just see the edge of the swale there. So we paddled up here and we came hooked around this um, kind of mud bank here. Uh, this is Dead Man's Island here that I pointed out to you. And there's Grain Fort or Grain Tower. So we came down here, the incoming tide and the uh, wind were just pushing us along nicely and then we just snuck across and threw into the back of Dana Island and to the fort. And that's where we stayed last night. Uh, this morning we got up and we paddled around the outside of Darnet Fort, past the uh, uh, power station and the jetty there, through Oakham Nest Jetty and then we went up uh, B B Ness creek and we stopped just there where that little hook bit of um, jetty is there and then we clambered up here and that's where we had our lunch uh, UB122 is just at the back over here we then paddled out and across the medway here and we just landed on that very tip here that's where that sort of small beach was and then we paddled around this headland here and then up to the jetty there at uh, Burntwick Island, which is where we are now. So that's what we've done so far. Tomorrow morning, we're gonna leave here and we're gonna paddle around, around here. And then if we can, depending on what the tide is like, we're gonna try and get down this channel here, which cuts the corner off um, that spit there at Queensborough. Um, and that will just take a bit of time off if we if we can. Um, I'm not sure whether we're going to be able to get onto Dead Men's Island, which is what I'd hope to do. Um, I think the tide is going to be too low and it's just going to be mud banks and we might not be able to get up there, but we'll see. If we can, we will, but we'll just have to see how things are. We might not even be able to take that channel in, so we might end up having to paddle up and around the end of the spit like we did uh, yesterday and then down back down to Queensborough to the uh, to the jetty there so that is where we've been this is just my tide table here <laughs> I've written down high and low tide uh, tide times for each of the days just so that we could kind of plan what we were doing my best joke. <laughs> and I usually can't remember jokes. Now I wish you couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> when I was teaching when I was teaching I told that to a to a class full of seven year olds and, oh, and, I, had th and I had three of them in tears. <laughs> <laughs>
Morning folks, it's about half past six. We got up pretty early this morning, um, knowing that we had to get back on the water before that tide went out too far, and um, just quickly packed away. I managed to squeeze in a cup of coffee, but that's about it this morning. <laughs> um, we have got maybe, uh, you know, sort of 20 minutes or so, I suppose. So we might just be able to get some, some food down as very quickly before we head back on the water. It's not a huge paddle today. <clears throat> We're really just uh, paddling back to, to where I parked. So um, yeah, it should be all right. Hopefully uh, get a little glimpse of Dead Man's Dead Man's Island. Um, I don't think we're going to get a chance to get on, but if we do get the opportunity, like I said last night, then we'll um, we'll go and have a little look. But uh, that very much depends on how low the tide is by the time we <clears throat> get past that island. Yeah, beautiful morning again. We've been so lucky with the weather on this trip. Absolutely stunning. This has been a nice little place to camp, actually. Um, apart from the fact that it was clearly a rubbish dump at some point in the past so there's a lot of rubbish about and obviously the tide washes a load of rubbish up on the island as well so there's you know plastic bottles and all your normal sort of like floating debris strewn about the place but apart from that we managed to find quite a good spot to camp uh, near the jetty by the water and um, yeah it was good it was good it's quite exposed um, you know I'm, I'm sure Andy was glad to have his tent and I was certainly glad to have brought that tarp <laughs> to uh, give us a bit of protection last night from the wind because that was just cutting across. <clears throat> it wasn't a strong wind, but it was a cold wind. Yeah. just passing Dead Man's Island on our right here and we were hoping to get ashore but as you can see the tide has just dropped too much and um, it's just mud. Dead Man's Island was given its name because it was um, a burial island basically. Um, there used to be prison hog ships uh, moored out here in the River Medway and um, anybody that died aboard those prison ships was buried on that island. And uh, as the waves wash up against the shore and the island is slowly eroded, the bones of those um, dead prisoners are exposed. And apparently you can pull up onto a beach there and there are bones on the shore. Of those poor souls that died on those horrendous prison ships. 
Well, we're nearly back in Queensborough. We've just uh, turned off the main Medway Channel and we're now paddling up the Swale. Um, this has been a fantastic trip. I've thoroughly enjoyed seeing a bit of history. Hey, dude. <laughs> Made it. Yeah, thoroughly enjoyed seeing seeing that fort, spending spending um, the night in that fort. That island last night was brilliant. We've had superb weather. Bit of a challenging paddle yesterday, but um, that all adds to the fun of it, really, doesn't it? It's just a memory. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's been really good, and it's been good to see you, buddy. Yes, thanks for this coming. It's been a, a, a trip long in the making hasn't yeah. it really <laughs> yeah. yeah delay after delay yeah definitely <laughs> yeah no thank you it's been awesome thanks for watching i'll see you soon <laughs> <laughs>